Hello, I want to go over uh, how to use and read a, our dial calipers that we use. Um, these are 6 inch dial calipers that are accurate out to the hundredths position. Um, they are uh, decimal and fractional, but we'll be dealing with just the decimal portion of that uh, throughout this process. Um, when you get these out and you're first messing with them, um, please be very careful with them. Uh, they are, again, they're, they're a tool for measuring and if you drop them or um, you know, rough with them, they lose their calibration and then their functionality. Um, they also have some very sharp edges on them. So please be careful when handling them. There is some points. Um, and some sharp corners with them. Um, dial calipers are arguably the most common and versatile of all the precision measuring tools. Uh, you'll find that they can just about measure just about anything we need to do as we go and use these. Um, there's four ways of measuring that we can get into using the dial caliper. Um, we have outside diameter, inside diameter, space Dis or step distance and hole depth. The first one here is outside. This is kind of the common one you'll be using. And you have these two jaws. And as you slide it open, you'll see those jaws opening up. And you could use those to clamp down, you know, example here, clamp down onto a, an area from outside to outside. And that'll give you your outside diameter. You have the top one, the second way, is the uh, for inside diameter uh, or a slot width. Uh, that's the jaw of the two pointy jaws on top. They are flared outwards. Um, those are good for measuring circles and spaces in between an area. Instead of you trying to use the outside jaw to guess where it's at, this one actually can press against both walls. You'll see here in this picture that it's measuring inside diameter a little more accurately than you're trying to use the bottom of it. Uh, the third method here is the step measuring and this one I don't use it's at least the way I use it. Um, you can use it to step measure these steps and if you turn it vertically you use the base area right here and then you use the flat portion on the jaw itself, on the the moving part of it, and you can rest that on the step that you have, and that'll give you a measurement. Now, the reason why I don't use that one a whole lot is I'd rather, when I'm measuring my distance up here, I use this fourth method, which fourth method, which is the depth. Now, as you're holding them and as you open them up, you look to the right side and you'll see this piece come out as you're adjusting it. And that piece is for measuring depth. Now how you actually measure this is when you hold it vertically, you'll slide it down till the point touches what you want at the bottom where you want to measure. And then you'll notice there is a little, the flat portion on the blade. And you want that to rest just on the top of your surface. And then the distance there, will, that will give you your distance how deep that down it goes. So there's the four ways of doing it. Um, here's some names we need to go over, terminology. Um, again, this is our standard, this is our six inch dial caliper. Uh, it measures slightly more than six inches. Um, what we'll be dealing with in here uh, will not be uh, nearly that long but you have the capability of doing it once you learn how to read this. Um, now, notice we have a blue area out here. This is our uh, decimal, and then inside we have fractional. We're going to be focusing just on the outside, the blue area, as when we go through this. You'll also notice some others. Now, on the blade scale itself, I've opened it up, and you can see inside, um, or open the jaw itself here, and you'll see the decimal across the top, and you'll see the fractions across the bottom. 
Now again, we're dealing with decimal here and with our AutoCAD, so I'm going to ignore this bottom portion of it. Uh, but you see that they are divided into 10 increments. So you see 0, that is your inch. So right now it's at 0, that would be 0 inches. And then you have a tenth, no, 2 tenths, 3 tenths, 4 tenths, all the way out to 9 tenths, and then 1 inch. So there's 10 tenths. And then starting over again, 2, 3 inches. Uh, they are divided into that way. You can use this as a reference, and we'll learn more about that. Also on here you can see the rack itself, the teeth on this, and this is what allows it to um, the uh, dial to spin as it's moving. Uh, now the blade, that's what we're just kind of looking at there, this is the immovable portion of the dial caliper. Uh, where the slider itself, that's where the dial is located at, that's the portion that actually moves along the blade and how we actually do our measuring. And then while you're moving it, you have your dial pointer itself, and that's what's spinning uh, as the pointer rotates within the dial and slider moves back and forth along the blade. Um, and as you play around, as you see it, as you roll it, it's going to do one full spin for every inch it travels. Now, also on that slider, you'll see there's two screws. You have one on the top and one on the bottom. This one on top here is known as your slide scale lock. And the purpose of that is, here it says, or I have written here, uh, the slide scale lock screw keeps the measurement held in place so you can read it more closely. What that allows you to do is you can, once you get your measurement set, you can then tighten that down, just a quarter turn, and then you can remove the thing that you're measuring, and then it'll hold that measurement in place so the slide won't move anywhere else. Um, also, with the slide scale, if you have yours and you see it's kind of hard to move back and forth as you're sliding it, that might be too tight. You can just do a little quarter turn to loosen it and then allow you to uh, slide it back and forth. The other screw is on the bottom of this is known as your dial adjustment lock. And dial adjustment lock screw allows you to rotate the bezel and adjust the precision. And the bezel, this is the outside of uh, the dial itself here. And I'll get show you why it's important here. Um, now in this case, I have my jaw closed. And most of yours, if your jaw is closed, the zero, it should be pointed straight up to the zero. The dial should be. But notice on this one, it's not pointing straight up to zero. It's just a couple ticks past zero. And that would mean all my measurement that I would do from this point would all be off by just point, you know, point zero 0.02. So that could throw everything off. So if you close your jaw all the way and look, and this is always a good thing to check every day when you get your um, calipers out, look down, make sure it's closed, and check that before you start into your measurements. Now, if it is messed up like this one, all you have to do is just turn the dial, or the, um, the screw, just a quarter turn to loosen it up, and then grab the outside bezel and just turn it so that it's lined up at zero. Once it's lined up at zero, then just twist it, tighten back down, and you're good to go. Uh, again, this is a very, kind of very rarely this is messed up, but it's always a good thing to check every day. Just real quick, look down, make sure it's closed at zero, make sure it's straight up at zero. If it's not, easy fixed. You also have a reference edge. As you're sliding this and this is the, the smooth edge along the slider. And it's to help show you keep track of your larger increments. And we'll learn how to read this here in a moment, but you'll see the one, the two, the three, the four, and it kind of helps you keep track of where you're at. So in this case, here's one point. You know, this one here is not quite to the four yet, even though the four is showing, uh, it's always to the right. So the one, this is for that one here, that tick. 2 is for this one, 3 is for this one, 4, that line is not showing yet. And you look over here, we can see we're not quite to the point 4 yet on that as it moves along the track. Again, I just talked about the rack a moment ago. The rack, uh, this is where the teeth are actually turning the gear inside of this to turn the dial. Um, so uh, be careful not to just slide this way or quickly forwards and backwards. Try to be nice with it so you don't happen to skip a tooth or anything with it. 
Now, let's get into actually how to read this. Now, the dial is divided into a hundred, or divided a hundred times. So each one is equal to uh, one hundredth. I have that typo there, one hundredth of an inch. So, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twenty, all the way around uh, to a hundred. Now, to determine the outside diameter of this part, we must first identify how many inches are being shown on this blade scale. And when you do this, look at this part. Um, you'll see that our reference edge right along here is between the 1 and 2 mark. Here's our 1 inch right here, the large one. But you see the 2 is going to be somewhere over here, and it's not showing. So I go back to this point here, and I know it's going to be at least 1. So, mental note of that, it's at least it's going to be a whole number is going to be one. That's the first thing you want to track. And in reality, that's the only thing you really need to look at on the rack itself, is to see what whole number is showing. So, in the case here, I have my one. Now, look onto the dial itself, and we're going to focus just on the blue portion of it. Um, we're going to see what tenth the dial is just past, and that'd be the tenth place. So here we have the 10, 20, 30, 40. It's just past the 40. It's not to the 50 yet. So I know it's one inch, 1.4 something. So I'll go and mark that down, 1.4. Then the last step here is then count each tick. And again, there's going to be 10 ticks between each of these. So if you start counting these, this would be your 100th spot. So 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, this one here, 1, 2, 3, 4. And it's almost the 5. I'm going to count this one as 5 um, on that spot. So in this case, it's just 5 ticks past the 40, or 0 0.05. You just add those up and you'll get 1.45. So again, looking at just the whole number first, so is it zero inch, is it gonna be one whole inch, so on and so on. Once you determine that, look on your dial, see where it's going to, in this case here, 1.4, and then count each six. So that's actually four, four, one, four, two, four, three, four, 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 five. So one point or five is what we end up with. And this works for any of the measurements you're doing. The four styles measurement, the outside, the inside, the depth, the step, you get the same thing, nothing to convert, just going through those steps. Um, another one here, show at. Um, so what is this measurement? We see here on our dial, or on our slide, our slide is just past the one, so the one is showing and the one line is showing, so I know it's at least one inch. And then we go to the dial itself, so one point what? Now here, it's just past the zero, it's not even to the 10 yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and put zero down, so 1.0. Then I count my ticks, so one tick, two ticks, three ticks, four ticks. So that's point zero four. And I end up with 1.04. Now, a common error with this situation is you would count these ticks and say, well, it's at zero, it's a one inch, so one, and then start counting one, two, three, four, and put 1.4 down. Now, 1.4 and 1.04, there's a difference. Uh, so make sure that you always reference back to the 0, the 10, 20, 30, 40, and then count the ticks from that point. Um, but that is a common error in this area right here, uh, between the tenth of 0 and to one tenth of that, uh, you'll run into that situation. So, um, you know, if it was, this was slid back just a little bit before the 1, this would say this was pointed right here. Well, then it would be 0 inches, so 0 point, nine, and I count my ticks, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, say it's over here. So we 0 
0.97 inches. So just reference to the whole number, then to the dial itself for your decimal places out to the 100th spot that we're going to. Um, what I'd like you to do now uh, with your newfound knowledge of this is uh, go through and play around with it. Use the box, the case that you have, the black case, and um, you can go through and measure it. So measure how, how thick it is, use the depth, the little groove where the um, your finger can go into to open the case up, open the case up, measure the thickness of the case, measure, um, just play around with it and see what kind of measurements you can come up with. Um, and again, when you're done, make sure you, each day you make sure it's closed all the way and then put it nicely back into the case and uh, put it away where it goes with the coordinate or coordinating number with it.